Welcome to Miniature Paintbrush. Today we're gonna to paint up the Cadaverous Barricade, an endless spell for my Flesh Eater Quartz Army. Hello and welcome back. Okay, so we're going to start off with Olive Green Steinol Res Primer. And I like painting with primer. It's very forgiving. So getting that as the base, tone, base coat throughout all of these uh, corpses that you see here. Now this technique can be easily used with uh, anything that has a whole bunch of bodies strewn upon it. Um, thinking about the um, barricade for the Cadians. I remember there was one that has a whole bunch of bodies in front of it. So you can use the same method here. All right, next up is Somber Gray. Somber Gray is my mid-tone for any kind of brick or stone work uh, that I do. I do like it because it's like a really bluish kind of gray and it works really well. Um, for this purpose so i use that you can use any mid-tone gray that you want for your stone work here uh, but just make sure it's like a middle tone gray or a darker gray to start off with remember the low lights are black next up what we're going to do is we're going to do the highlights on it some some of the light catches and for that i use heavy blue gray which is a lighter bluish gray i really do like bluish gray um yes it really does a great job at bringing those highlights in and um just a little bit of brush control here um will definitely do you well make sure that the light is one directional and choose that directional light so next up is Brown Steinol Res Primer. I do like primers, it's very forgiving, especially because I'm just new to this airbrush right here. And so I actually have to um, practice with it and I know that I'm gonna overspray here and there. So I just wanna make sure that when I do make a mistake that I have a little bit more play within there and using a primer to paint with, especially a lay flat primer is a good idea so you can get warmed up uh, to the pressure that you need to apply with your fingers through an airbrush. So that I really do like that. Also, if you're brush painting, um, a lot of the brush strokes seemingly disappear uh, not all of them <laughs> so be careful dilute it I dilute everything so dilute your paint when you're brush painting something like this so just to make sure that you actually have you know the right consistency so you don't leave any brush marks here I want to get into the lore a little bit so while I apply my fist on red to uh, the cadaverous uh, barricade I wanted to let you know that that those flesh eaters who believe themselves to be especially pious may call upon ancestral spirits to aid them in battle by invoking oaths sworn by many centuries ago by civilians that bowed before Usharan. An abhorrent gives life to the buried dead that serves his sovereigns in bygone times. From long forgotten tombs they emerge, rising up to the battlefield so that they once more may fight for the cause of their lord. In the eyes of the abhorrent, however, the dead upon whom they have called manifest as mighty spectral warriors clad in ornate armor and carrying broad shields. The spiritual guardians, spectral guardians, from up into a tight defensive form up into a tight defensive position and from within their ranks rises a barrier of impenetrable light they were once defenders of usharan's empire charged with protecting the walls of his keep and castles for all eternity and they diligently carry on his duty from beyond the grave silent and dauntless they stand firm as the enemy charges holding back waves of foes while shielding abhorrent armies from hails of arrows and bolts but these spectral defenders are an illusion seen only by the insane minds of the flesh eaters it is not gleaming warriors that rise from the grave but moldering corpses imbued with mindless hunger and rage as they claw their way up through the ground they drag up with 
them twisted remnants of an ancient civilization for which they were once part of. Rusted palisades covered with gore and barbed fences surrounded mass graves. Foated blood spills forth from the wounds of the earth, releasing nauseated fumes of airs while cadaverous hands grab any foes foolish enough to stray within the reach of the moaning dead. This is really i mean i do like the lore between these things because it's like it really ties in these are old Sharon's army coming up to serve but they like all twisted and that's because fleshy records everything is twisted in reality and everything is a manifestation of the insanity of the ghoul king so next up red five from war colors you can use any color for the following things these are just for the clothing and remnants that, that uh, some of these things have and i just i enjoy the following colors so you can choose any color you want for that progress process and um it really does shine out later on we're going to cover most of this work but you don't have to but i'm going to cover all this work with grime i'm going to do an oil wash and i'll show you how i do that here's a close-up view of how i apply the paint all right so next up what we're going to do is brown number two uh getting some variation Staying within those warm kind of tones uh, because the green itself is kind of bluish in my opinion so having that blue contrasting that green olive green contrasting with a breath with browns I think uh, really makes the cadavers pop out a little more and I'm gonna need that later especially when I add grime to it but you could see the brush strokes uh, just going through I really just get close to the edge slowly but surely you know i'll start painting and then i'll just get close to the edge it's the brush strokes that i like to use just to be careful with each one okay so next up orange war colors now this takes several coats to do uh, as with all of them especially because they are very diluted um when gel paints i find that uh, you don't dilute them traditionally either you dilute them way down or you use them as thick paint and well i wanted coverage but i did want some of the gradients left over so i figured i'm gonna go with uh, a much uh diluted paint okay next up was bone white from vallejo game color and I'm going to show you why I do bone white right there. I wanted to talk a little bit about the cadaverous barricade and its abilities within the game. Okay, it says, with a word of command, the buried dead are brought writhing to the surface. The corpses of those who once served Usharan rise up from the grave, dragging with them the detritus of the forgotten civilization. And with lifeless hands, they claw at the living who draw too near. So it is a single model. It has a casting value of five. It has the ability of grasping hands. And then if any model, any model is in three inches, is going to move half its movement. And then there's grizzly obstacles. It's when a missile uh, weapon targets a unit that is with the one inch of this, uh, they gain the, the benefit of cover. So you can actually have cover uh, when you're really close to this. So it's pretty cool and pretty functional within the game. Very interesting model. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to paint black. And I wanted to do hair color, so you can use black. I did jet black for some of them. Uh, you can do brown. You can do any color you really want when it comes to the hair. I just wanted to do jet black uh, for this one right here. So, you know, have some fun with this. This is like definitely a, almost a blank canvas when it comes to uh, the color choices here. You may want to consult yourself a, um, a color wheel just to make sure that everything is in balance with each other but as, uh, after that i mean you're golden all right speaking of metallic <laughs> time for some vallejo metal color steel i love vallejo metal color when it comes to metallic i'm not using my fine brush for this and i'm definitely not using my wet palette for this if you use it with the wet palette it's going to damage your brushes because they're actual bits of metal in here so what i'm using is one happy choice brushes i do like those brushes in particular i have a link in the description if you're interested in getting them um and they come 50 with their pack and i think it's about 17 bucks for 50 brushes and they're throwaway brushes with a nice firm tip they don't have um, that much of a belly but that's the only drawback in here you have a nice firm tip to give you control 
All right, so next up we're gonna do is go to do some dry rust. Uh, and I'm just picking out this, this is from Game Effects. I like doing Vallejo Game Effects model colors. AK Interactive also has a dry rust that is excellent. There are so many different kinds of uh, technical paints that you can use for this effect. This just makes it really easy for me to add rust to the model. So that's what I use. And, you know, sometimes you can uh, you can get a little too crazy with this. Know that uh, with a little exacto blade and a gentle touch, you can remove some of this dried rust if you go a little bit too far. So, you know, sparingly at first, take a look back to see how the whole piece plays out and then just add here and there. And try to think of, well, if water is running down this stuff, then where would dust, where would rust start collecting? So you wanted to take account physics here. Always use a reference when in doubt. Okay, next up, Pale Burnt Metal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna catch some of the highlights, just doing the light catches where I would think the light would catch the most. And that would be the edges of uh, the tips here. And doing the edges there, doing the edge of the railing as well, just here and there. And you wanna go over the dry rust as well because it seems like some of the scratches would be new uh, as well as some of them being covered and the, the rust would be older. So it gives it a story or a patina to it. It's pretty cool. Say so next up, I'm gonna show you how to do oil colors. So what I'm doing is taking the brand dyke brown and I'm taking ivory black and I'm putting it into a disposable cup. You can get these cups um, with my white mineral spirits and I'm gonna start making you can get these cups uh, actually at fast food restaurants, but I order them. Um, I think I got them at a big box store. I don't know if it was either Sam's Club or uh, Costco or something like that. You can get them there and have like an abundance of them. Like I got like 300 of them, so <laughs> they're definitely disposable. And you can tell I mix it quite well. Next up, I take an oil brush. And yes, I have a brush dedicated just for the oil bits. And it's gonna look like it's coming on super dark here. And that's okay uh, that it goes on super dark. Uh, and the reason why is because it's like a brownish black and it's going over a brown, so it makes it really, really makes it pop out. But you can see when I go over the corpses that it doesn't have that effect. Uh, it actually has a transparent effect where it's just going to pull into the areas uh, where I need it. And it's just generally a wash, right? I generally do not use washes, but when it comes to oil, I wash the heck out of this. And the great thing about this is, is that it's very forgiving. So if you put too much somewhere, uh, you can go back later, which I'll show you a little later in this video, that you can go back with uh, mineral spirits and reactivate it after you let it dry. And um, the thing about oil, washes that are not so good that you have to let it dry for a very long time now you see I'm going into the areas where it's pooling uh, where I don't want it to pull and I'm just taking it off with a brush definitely a technique that you're going to want to use before you let it dry for at least 24 hours yes 24 hours so this is a step that's going to take a while to do but it does such a good job of getting all the crevices next up uh, with some mineral spirits and a q-tip or a cotton swab you're gonna go in there and you're gonna start removing some of the paint and bringing back some of the original sheen to it I mean it really does come out well and I encourage you to use this process here it is all painted up now enjoy the pictures and I'll catch you on the outro Here it is, quite a large miniature actually. Well, if you'd like to support the channel, click on a link from the Amazon affiliates that I have down below. And at zero cost to you, you can help support the channel by giving some monetary kickback. And if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paint Press.